A few weeks ago, this channel exclusively leaked the die size of GB203, which is the Blackwell die that will be used in both the desktop RTX 5080 16 gigabyte, but then also in the laptop RTX 5090 24 gigabyte. You heard me right, that 377 millimeter square die is set to actually be used to give last gen desktop 90 class VRAM capacity to the next laptop 90 GPU once 24 gigabit GDDR7 modules are available in quarter two of 2025. But here's the thing, immediately upon learning this this month, I started to openly wonder if the RTX 5080 will also be getting a massive uplift this generation as well in the laptop because i mean come on if nvidia is increasing vram capacity by 50 percent for the 90 class this time around shouldn't that mean that the 5080 laptop class also gets juiced up a ton as well and, and that would logically lead me to conclude that perhaps gb203 will also be used for a 16 gigabyte 5080 laptop card i mean after all uh, there was heavy criticism of the vram capacity and the segmentation of mobile lovelace that came from multiple outlets including me saying that it was just not right that the rtx 4080 laptop had only 12 gigabytes of ram because it was really just an underclocked rtx 4070 and it, and it wasn't just gamers that didn't like this professionals uh some that came on broken silicon openly said that mobile lovelace was just uninteresting to them because it didn't have enough vram and so yeah i've been speculating that if they're giving 24 gigabytes it seems to the 5090 laptop edition shouldn't they be giving more vram to the rest of the lineup and the answer appears to be yes this week i was sent confirmation by one of my best long-term nvidia sources that there is indeed a heavily cut down gb203 laptop variant that has 8192 cuda cores which means that it's cut down by a whopping 24 percent from the full die and it also comes with 16 gigabytes of GDDR7. And actually, that's not all. I also have a picture of it. There it is on screen. There is that 377 millimeter squared, four nanometer die that I've been talking about for weeks now. I believe this is what will power both the RTX 5080 uh, desktop GPU, but then also the laptop 5090 and laptop 5080 gpus as well now i say believe it will because to be fair i cannot technically say that i'm 100 sure that the configuration that i've leaked today with over 8,000 cuda cores and 16 gigabytes of gdr7 that this will be what goes into something called a 5080 or a 5080 ti like plausibly i could see this going into some mobile a5000 blackwell workstation laptop card i could see that happening but again just to recap my theory here I do, though, know there's a 24 gigabyte gaming variant of a Blackwell card. If NVIDIA is bringing 24 gigabytes to gaming on laptop, pretty sure the 24 gigabyte configuration is going to be the RTX 5090. That just makes sense to me. And that because that would give you so much bandwidth with so much VRAM that they're probably going to give it the full die so it's not bottlenecked or it's bottlenecked as little as possible. And then because of that, I would think the 16 gigabyte variant, you know, the one with eight gigabytes less RAM, I would think that model is also probably going to be heavily cut down and the configuration I'm leaking today is. Although I want to say this, despite this hypothetical RTX 5080 laptop edition that I've leaked today being heavily cut down, that is to say a heavily cut down variant of GB203, I still expect this thing to be way, way, way stronger than the RTX 4080 laptop edition. But how much stronger? Well, I did some napkin math that really just averages the increase in like teraflops uh, with the increase in bandwidth. And let me run down where I think the performance is going to be. I think the RTX 5080 laptop edition, if it is the specs I'm leaking today, will be 45 to 65% faster than the laptop RTX 4080 12 gigabyte. I'm really not kidding there. And to anyone who disputes these numbers, by the way, if it gets 28 gigabit per second GDDR7, this configuration does, it's only going to have 11% less bandwidth than a desktop 4090. And that's why, yeah, I think it could be 45 to 65% faster than the 4080 12 gigabyte or napkin math i also think it would be 10 to 25 percent faster than the laptop rtx 4090 16 gigabyte or maybe even around a desktop 4070 ti super or even a desktop rtx 4080 
80. The only real wild card here uh, for me is if they're going to underclock the GDDR7 at all to give it better efficiency because they just think that much bandwidth is overkill in a laptop considering it will run at lower core clock speed. So that's why there's a range in performance, but I do think you're looking at probably somewhere around desktop 4080 performance, at least in the laptops that really let this thing have at least a like 175 watt TDP, which I've also heard they're targeting for it. All right, and now it is time to move on to what I am hearing about Intel Aerolake, both from reviewers, Intel partners, and even from Intel themselves, who are now dealing with the chaos behind the scenes of what is apparently a very frustrating cycle of benchmarking these CPUs that launched this week. And it's not just about bad performance, by the way. I'm about to leak... Well, stuff that you all deserve to know before you bother to pre-order this thing, because... There could be instability issues, actually, with Air Lake as well. And I want to tell you about the chaos I'm hearing from people who have their hands on Air Lake right now. But first, an ad from a sponsor. This piece of content is brought to you by the Basis Bowie 30 Max noise cancellation headphones. The Bowie 30 Max offers an immersive audio experience because it has cutting edge head tracking spatial audio technology that delivers lifelike 3D sound. And it also has two active noise canceling microphones and digital noise cancellation technology that can detect and cancel out a wide range of low and mid frequency noises with up to 96% noise blocking. And it even has up to 65 hours of battery life so it won't die on you while you're on the go. And it up for maximum transportability so you'll actually want to bring it with you because it won't take a bunch of room while you're on the go oh and it's even recommended by claudio ragazzi a grammy and emmy award-winning berkeley professor and so look if you're interested in this product and you want to support moore's law is dead check out the directions and the links in the description to get the best deal possible on this product following those directions and even just clicking on the links in the description helps the channel a ton and it of course also ensures that you're going to get the best deal on these fantastic headphones so support moore's law is dead by checking checking out the basis Bowie 30 Max noise canceling headphones today. All right, so for this section of the video, I've decided out of respect for the people I talk to to not directly quote anybody because of how sensitive this is uh, from what I've been hearing behind the scenes from people who already have their hands on Arrow Lake. And this includes people like, yes, reviewers, big tech tubers that I speak with, but it also includes people like game developers who already have their hands on Arrow Lake for testing their games on or maybe running servers on them. And also people at Intel who are now grappling with the complaints from game developers and tech tubers behind the scenes and well so here it is everybody everybody is complaining about arrow lake right now and here is why i've been told and i've even seen some final review data and averages that suggest that the ultra 9 285k is not only going to lose to the 7800x3d in gaming but also possibly the 14900k 9950x and even i saw this in one review set of averages the 13900K. That's right, a double generation regression in gaming. In fact, the Ultra 7 265K in one set of averages I saw even lost to the 7700X in gaming. Then when it comes to non-gaming performance though, yeah, I, it depends on what apps go into your averages, but it's basically a tie with the 9950X here from what I saw. And that's really my point here. Sure, I am sure there will be some reviews that will find a single digit win for Arrow Lake, maybe a double digit win for Arrow Lake in one use case over Zen 5, uh, because it does, of course, depend on the exact apps and the exact games you use for your average. But there will be other reviews, I'm pretty confident at this point, that show that Arrow Lake outright loses to not just Zen 5, but other last generation products, maybe even across the board. And thus, the picture I'm trying to paint. For you all is of one where there's just no point in getting air lake over zen 5 because it doesn't consistently win at anything and now zen 5 is actually officially cheaper now that amd's put out price drops for it but it gets even worse than that because it's the consistency that's an even bigger issue the worst part about air lake is according to every single tech tuber and game developer i spoke to who has their hands on it the thing 
doesn't work. I've seen multiple sets of review data where they have extreme variance in performance from test run to test run, fluctuating by 10% in the averages, depending on which run they did. And then I've had other people tell me that they've had constant blue screening issues and, and even issues with games booting them out of online servers because the Ultra 9 was detected as running some kind of cheating code, even though it wasn't. It's so bad that I happen to know that multiple reviewers are even wondering if there's a hardware flaw in Arrow Lake causing these instability problems. Although I will say, the second I heard that, I reached out to someone at Intel and said, is there a hardware flaw in Arrow Lake? And the person said they almost certainly think there isn't, just that it's got incredibly borked software at launch and maybe bad microcode. Uh, and as of the past 24 hours... Those people that I reached to, out to at Intel were at first a little shocked that I was bringing up all the complaints I'm hearing, again, from developers and reviewers. But then, as of today, they're all just like, oh, no, no, we're here. They're complaining to us constantly. There are a lot of people at Intel scrambling right now to do damage control and try to avoid maybe one of the worst review days of the year. It's been a year of pretty bad review days, too, so that'd be quite an accomplishment for Intel if that happens. And that's really why I decided to leak this all to you so close to the actual launch. You know, someone might ask, why not just wait and do an analysis video early on Air Lake reviews? You just have a head start on knowing how it's going to turn out. Well, it's because it's different than Zen 5 this time. You know, Zen 5, I heard some pretty bad things a couple days before it launched, but it was mostly just disappointing gaming performance and this thing seems to not be that done it wasn't like i'm getting a blue screen every 30 minutes or i'm getting kicked out of online games because it thinks my arrow lake or zen 5 cpu is hacking that's worse the, you deserve i think you gamers or anyone who would want to buy this product deserve to be warned that if you have this pre-ordered it might arrive and not work that's just a different situation and again i just want to summarize what i'm hearing one more time Number one, it basically sounds like it ties Zen 5 in performance, or depending on the averages, might even just lose across the board, especially when it comes to gaming. And then you have to consider that that's against stock Zen 5. Were you to use fast RAM and push PBO to like a 250 watt power limit like Ehrlich has, I'm pretty sure Zen 5 might just not lose at anything. Uh, and indeed, though, I will say this. The only good thing that I heard and I saw in some charts with Arrow Lake reviews that are about to happen is that it seems more efficient than Zen 5, actually. So that is one bright spot for Arrow Lake if they can work out these software problems. But they're certainly not worked out as of the time this video is coming out. And so, yeah, that's all I'm going to say about it, though. Out of the respect of my colleagues, I'm not going to go into specifics on what is being investigated when it comes to if there is a hardware flaw or some flaw in Air Lake. I want you to watch the day one and probably day two and week two and week three reviews of Air Lake to see the real work people are doing testing Air Lake. I don't want to scoop anybody here. I just want to warn you if you have a pre-order, I'm not hearing good things. Watch those day one Arrow Lake reviews. I know I will be because this is going to be a weird, weird launch with a lot of investigations going into it, which I think should make for excellent and at least interesting day one reviews, even if they're not good ones for Intel. So get your popcorn ready. Make sure you have your fingers ready to click on those thumbnails when Arrow Lake launches. And uh, yeah, that's actually it. That's going to do it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please remember to like it, to share it, to comment down below for the algorithm. And then, you know, also consider uh, supporting Moore's Law is Dead on Patreon. This sort of work, you know, getting early information on mobile Blackwell, going behind the scenes and like deciding and trying to find things that people need to know ahead of time. It is a lot of work, not just for me, but also for Gerard, the editor, Carbon Cry, who helps with research, Dan, who helps with research and helps with the podcast and, of course, records podcasts with me as well. If you support us on Patreon, you're putting food on the table for multiple people that put a lot of effort into getting this content that you're enjoying out to you. And also, you know, new Die Shrink just came out. Lowest tier gets you access to hundreds of bonus episodes with no ads in them. Tech yeah City is coming on Broken Silicon soon. You'll be able to ask him questions if you support us on Patreon. There's there's so much extra bonus content there for you. If you just check that out, so please do. But you know what? No matter what, though, if you made it this far into the video, thank you for watching.